I was there for a really long time. And I think that my husband and I, we actually shared an office. We shared, a, we had desks opposite each other. It was very cute, actually. And we knew that we wanted to take ownership of something. We just knew that the next step for us, because TV jobs are great, but when you get into this business, you don't have any expectation that you're gonna have this job forever. Like, you're not gonna be on The Daily Show for 50 years and then retire with a gold watch. Like, TV jobs have a shelf life, and we totally knew that. And we thought, okay. So we, the whole time that we were there, you end up, as a correspondent on that show, having a lot of kind of downtime. You're not used every day, even though there's four shows a week. There were times would go by where we weren't on the show for four weeks. Like, you know, that's a lot of time. So in that open space, and it's, it's friendly and it's fine, but you're sort of idle and we're neither Jason nor myself. We're just not idle hands. People, we like to do things and be active and be always thinking about what's the next step. So in that space, we raised a family, like had three children, raised a family, you know what I mean? We're very attentive, full hands-on parents. And we wrote other projects and we tried to plan what our next step would be because we knew that it should have our names on it. Mm. Because that's logical. Um, so we wrote a lot of television pilots. We would go out, we would go to Los Angeles and do pitch meetings. We would like, we just, wanted to benefit from the doors that would open to us because we we're on television. And we did. I think we made a meal of it. We sold a bunch of movie scripts, we sold a bunch of television pilots, and we were just sort of always working generally to the next goal. And with that in mind, we sold a pilot to TBS. We sold the pilot for the detour mm -hmm. to TBS. And you know, you write all that you end up writing a lot of television pilots and they don't get greenlit, so they don't you don't actually get to you sell the the script, but it doesn't get made into like the pilot that is hopefully the thing that will sell the more episodes to the network. We'd never gotten to, we'd sold the pilots, but we hadn't made the pilots. Like we hadn't filmed them, which is like the next big step. And with the detour, we really felt that we had something special and we were like so hopeful that TBS would green light the filming of the pilot and they did. So December of 2014, they greenlit our pilot. We shot it in North Carolina, and we loved it so much. We had so much fun doing it. And we were like, this is it. This is the, our next step. If they greenlight the series, we will both leave The Daily Show, and we will go and make this scripted series, like eight or ten episodes of this script, and we'll move into the scripted space, and that is great because we're sick of news. We didn't necessarily think that the next step for us would be news. Mm -hmm. We had focused our energy, like we were focusing our behind-the-scenes energy on unscripted stuff, for sure. We had tried to sell people on a news-based pilot, definitely, and no one was really interested in those at the time because anytime I tried to sell anything that was news-based, people would be like, we don't need that, we have John. We don't need another news comedy show, we have one. Like, in the entire world, we have one, and that's John, and it's great, and so why bother? I guess Colbert was on the, show, on the scene, too, so they were like, we're solid. <laughs> there was no need to have a woman do it. We've got the gents. We're covered. So we shot the pilot in January. We edited it, and then in February, John announced that he was leaving The Daily Show. Mm -hmm. And we had not gotten the green light from TBS yet, so we were, we knew that he was gonna leave at some point because he's, he's mortal. done it for, he's a mortal human being. He doesn't wanna do it for more than, I cannot believe that he did it for 17 years. But we knew that that day was coming. None of us knew when it was. You can prepare for something only so much. So we had like a week of pure panic where we're like, okay, how are we gonna make a living? What do we do now? Because we knew that we would leave The Daily Show no matter what. We were like, we're out. So when he leaves, we're done. It's just a natural, it just felt like a natural end. You don't want to be like the person who, when someone new comes on, then you're just like the old snaggle tooth that's like the old hanger on from yesteryear. Like we were like, like a little fresh start it. We can jump out into the void. We are skilled. We will get work. Something will happen. It's still 
a leap of faith. And then after he about a week after he announced, I think I'm messing up the timeline a little bit, but TBS soon announced mm -hmm. that they were in fact going to pick up the detour. And then they approached me about doing my own show as well. So it all happened all at once. And did you have any inkling what that show would be, what the voice or the point of view would be? No, not really. I mean, I kind of knew vaguely what I would want it to be. I knew, because the last years of The Daily Show, my point of view had really deepened mm -hmm. with, you know, with the encouragement of John, for sure. And I knew that no matter what, it would have a very, like, it would have a very direct point of view. That's something that I knew that I would want to do. If I was doing a show like that, I would lean into that really hard or not do it at all. And so that part was crystal clear to me. And then we took a big pause and we wanted to move to Atlanta and filmed the detour. We spent many months living in Atlanta shooting that. Mm -hmm. And then when I and then I came back early and started developing full frontal.